Well, hello. Do you have your coffee? Are you all set? Hmm? Are you doing your keto under 20? Maybe under 25? Somebody just told me that they do under 32 and that works for them. And here's a nifty trick that they did. I love this. <clears throat> they used a glucometer. Um, she doesn't weigh or measure, but she used a glucometer when she first started keto and she could see what food spiked her sugar. And so she stays away from them. And so now she has her own little, um, nice little nifty list of things that work for her. <clears throat> so she doesn't have to weigh and measure and she knows that she's having safe foods. I think that's terrific. Well, well, uh, so I made my first, um, recipe from Eat Rich, Live Long, Ivor Cummins and Dr. Jeffrey uh, Gerber's new book. And um, I loved it. It was rich. It was just delightful. A uh, small serving went a long way. I even did a quick um, picture video of it. And um, I loved it. And Greg didn't. He said, if, if you make this again next year, that might be too soon. <laughs> So <clears throat> anyway, a small cup is left. So that'll be my meal um, in another day. And um, I only made one batch just in case. But because it had the same species spices that um, I'm planning for tomorrow night with the chicken, um, chunks of chicken thigh, boneless chicken thigh, I decided I'm not going to make that. And so um, we're just, you know, I, I figured as soon as I made a recipe that's not mine, and I don't have recipes, I just have simple cooking, that Greg might, you know, feel, just go back to doing what you were doing. I like it that way. So anyway, it was funny. Um, so, so much for that. I'm glad it wasn't a cookbook I bought. I'm glad it was a um, cholesterol, weight loss, keto diet uh, book that I bought. So the recipes were just a bonus. Although I am going to make a pounded pork tenderloin pinwheel with smoked gouda, spinach, um, something else. Anyway, I'll definitely be talking more about it when I get to that. So that's going to go in it and rolled up and then we'll have some slices of that. He might like that, but if he doesn't like that as well, I'm not going to make it spicy. It was just an idea and I'm just going to turn it into our type of foods, maybe even a strip or two of bacon. Oh, the decadence. Um, yeah, I'm definitely going to stick to what I do, which is basic, like a pork chop cooked in coconut oil, like a filet mignon cooked on the big green egg, but uh, very, very rare, and then heated up in a pan with some uh, pasture-raised butter and um, asparagus and things like that. Now, today is a leftover filet. I'm having six ounces of that reheated on uh, with some curry gold butter on top of the stove. I am having um, two ounces of cauliflower crumbles sauteed in butter. I am having six asparagus and I am having a different salad. I'm having a spinach salad with walnuts, blue cheese, and crumbled blue cheese. I'm going to crumble it myself. Yes, Rochelle, it's going to be just exhausting to crumble it myself. Oh my God. Where is the help when you need it? And um, so walnuts, macadamia nut oil, baby organic spinach, and the crumbled blue cheese. That's going to be on the side. That's restaurant grade to me. Oh yes. So um, a different version of the big A salad, even a different bowl. Oh, D does my elegance have any 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 limits? No, it doesn't. And so all of that today is so exciting. And I've already put it in my chronometer because I track my food before I eat it. So then if I have to go back in and tweak, it's not damage control. It's done before that can there can be damage. And that's what I work with every day. So today... And I've got the um, $36 version of the chronometer. And here it is. You can see that I'm having 1,400 calories, plenty of fats. And um, these are my macros. Make it bigger now. 
So it's 1,408 calories. Is that close enough? And um, protein is 63. Um, usually I cap it at 60, but I'm having that. Carbs are 12 and fats are 114. And to me, that's a really good lineup. Uh, I like that because I'm having plenty of oil in my spinach salad. I'm having um, the fats from the walnuts. I'm having the fat from the blue cheese. The um, filet isn't too fat, but it's high in protein, hence that. But I'm having the asparagus with butter, the collie crumbles with butter. And um, yeah. So, oh, back to that um, crock pot beef stew that I made from the uh, eat, eat rich, live well, live long. Um, I put radishes in. I peeled them. So I peeled off the red and I put the radishes in the stew. And yes, indeed, they do taste like new potatoes. Who knew? So if, you, if you're hankering for your potatoes and you kind of miss it, those radishes are the place to go. And I don't know, excuse me, I don't know how carby they are, but um, they certainly are less carby than any starchy potato. So it was a really nice treat. And um, I probably will do that again as a side dish. I'm thinking broiled swordfish, some of those radishes cooked in butter with asparagus, mm -hmm. yeah, with the salad on the side. Yeah. Do I only, only think about food all day long? Hmm. Yeah, except sometimes I think about shopping for food. <laughs> so anyway, that's, um, that's the lineup for that. And um, we'll see how it all plays out. But it was just funny when Greg said, yeah, if you make it maybe next year once, um, you know, that might be too soon. So I loved it. But yeah, um, I ate like a Parisian. That was a small bowl with a dollop of butter on top of it. So, mm-hmm. A little went a long way. I liked it. So anyway, today's topic, yeah, it only took me seven minutes and 17 seconds to get to it because I don't have a lot to say about it, which is kind of a disservice to the person that asked me. She asked that I do um, a video on social situations and um, they're very tricky for me. Um, I recall last, last summer, uh, Greg has this very eccentric, eclectic um, customer who he's done tons and tons of work for because he has an estate and um, all these different outbuildings and, and a great big stall for um, all of his toys like, you know, vroom vrooms and um, his equipment for <laughs> keep, building uh, keep building buildings on his property. Anyway, it's a beautiful a uh, very old antique piece of property and he keeps adding things to it. We drove by it the other day. There's another new huge hole in the ground. So we were kind of curious as to what that will be. And he's just, he must have all these women thinking that um, they will be the one kind of funny because he's like a confirmed bachelor, but he's so friendly and how he navigates the field. So anyway, he had a, um, a party and we were invited and I'd only heard about him and his work and his projects, you know, with Greg working there, but I'd never been there or met the gent. And he, he is a charmer and it is funny. So anyway, they were doing this, um, whatever he does, it's an annual thing. And it's this uh, great big chicken roast and all of these dishes and huge things. And I brought the big A salad, of course, covering, you know, with as a CYA in case. And so the party started at noon. So we were there a little afternoon because um, with social situations, we usually dive in, dive out. But because it was a cookout and all day event, we kind of thought we'd be eating sooner. But what we didn't realize is that um, another reason we're not too social is we don't drink. And so it was an open bar. He actually had a building that was a bar and he had it all set up with where you could sit like it was a bar with a service window as if the server was picking up her drinks to deliver to other people and all top top shelf anyway and so we don't drink and so there we are and so cocktail hour um we had to leave by four because i worked that night it was a sunday night and i had to work and they still hadn't gotten to dinner 
So um, I'm not sure if there are appetizers. I really don't think so. I think that he's the sort that you just wait till this dinner comes out. And so there was the big lighting the fire and the charcoal and the pit and the whole whole deal. It was not a clam bake. It was more like a chicken bake. And, uh, and so it was too late. We had to leave. So I never ate. So as far as handling social situations, I'm not that good at it. Not when it involves food. We go to Greg's family for um, Christmas. And then other times there's, you know, baby showers and weddings and things like that. And um, I find that those things you can kind of, you know, work your way keto wise around it. Um, for somebody like me, it's avoiding the drinks, it's avoiding the drunks, it's avoiding the appetizers, it's not eating while standing up, it's kind of getting my little plate, filling it once, and that's that. I don't bring my addict as best I can, and so I'm usually an early in, first one to get there, first one to eat, first one to leave type of person. So I won't say I'm antisocial, but the socializing that I do now is mostly one-on-one -on -one with gal pals or after the meetings, you know, I'll talk one-on-one -on -one to um, a friend that I have from the meeting about things, men and women. And um, of course, obviously we're standing there in the parking lot, so it doesn't involve food. But when um, I'm meeting with a gal pal, like the one that I had over for tea, you know, it's over a beverage and that's it. And I'll either have my um, Mountain Valley sparkling water or a bulletproof coffee or something like that. Um, so I'm, I'm also 67, so I'm not into the nightlife. So I know that um, one person talked one time about how he handles social situations, and it may seem odd. It works for him. He's fought pressure, but he, he shuts it down. He just gets the verbiage right. So this is what he does. He eats before he goes. So then when he gets there, he has nothing. He doesn't drink anything. He doesn't eat anything. And people are pushing, 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 because nobody wants to, you know, get drunk without company. Nobody wants to overeat without company. But um, in his social situations, he's a celebrity with many people. He eats before he goes. He says, no, thank you, no, thank you, no, thank you. And in no time, they, they stop asking at this particular event, and then they stop asking at future events. And so that's how he handles his social situations. So maybe that's the key, is eating before you go. Before I was doing keto under 20, I used to have um, a green apple and a, a wedge of cheese or, a wedge or some peanut butter to hold me over. Because of course, when I get there, my addict is going, it's time to eat now. And so no, people want two hours of drinks, <laughs> like at the weddings and things like that. And so it just it just holds no appeal for me. And now doing OMAD, I'm really not fun when it comes to something like that. Um, you know, if if a girlfriend said to me, let's meet at seven at a restaurant, well, at seven, I'm already in bed. So um, I guess I'm old and crotchety in that department and I want my one meal a day between three and four. Um, Greg accommodates. And so that's how I live my life. So it's not living it around social eating events. And it was for decades, but now it's not. And so I've settled in. And when I see other people doing videos and how they eat, it must kind of be the same for them. For example, you know, when Tammy, she does a lot of events with her kids because they're in all kinds of activities, but mostly the dancing one, you know, sometimes she doesn't get home till 9, 930 and she has her meal. Um, Michelle Rock, when she does her meal. She's busy with her kids all day long and she's not eating till like 10 o'clock at night. So for a lot of us doing keto, there is a shift in how we do our foods. If you're young, you're so lucky to be here. But that being said, finding what works for you in social situations with drinkers and appetizers and um, overeating and non-keto foods, it's difficult. And I guess you just have to find your own way. I'm not comfortable in those things. Those things aren't fun things for me to go to. I'm much more, plus my hearing is not that hot. So when I get to one of those things, all I hear is <laughs> So, 
you know, things change when you get older. They just do. And so I'm a one on one -er, and um, I like it like that. And that's how my relationships have changed. With my eating, it's changed. And so, although um, I'm not much help in social situations, um, those are my offerings on it. That's why the topic didn't need to be that long today. So thank you so much for watching. And I will see you the next time. This is Sarah, Pearls of Wisdom and Food with Keto. And as you can see, I'm under 13 for the day, and I like that. So I will see you the next time. Bye-bye for now.